and welcome to the photo video tutorials version 4.41 in today's tutorial we're going to show you how to import videos and photos into the photo video editor such that you are creating a new slideshow and your photos and videos get added to the storyboard after this we're going to show you how to manipulate your photos and video in the storyboard such that you can set the order they appear in or perhaps how long they are displayed for. We're also going to talk about adding blank slides to your storyboard as well and also creating something called design templates as well. Finally we're also going to talk about the photo vid show project file. This is a file that's stored in your computer that just contains the information about your storyboard and anything else to do with your slideshow. OK, let's get started. To add photos or video to your slideshow, as discussed on previous tutorials, what you need to do is left click the Add Pictures or Video to the Slideshow button here. So we're going to left click and what it does is show you a File Explorer window. By default, Photo Video goes to your Pictures folder here but your pictures or video may not be stored uh, there so you will have to navigate on your PC to wherever your photos or video is stored. Now if your photos and videos are stored on uh, a CD or external USB drive or even on your camera or things like that I recommend you copy them across to your hard drive first. Um, photo video will need access a fast access to your photos and video and they have to be stored on your hard drive so make sure you've copied any photos and video you want to import into photo video on a local hard drive on your PC. I've done that already and I want to left click here to import my holiday photos. So here's my holiday photos and video clips I wish to import into photo video. Now to select the ones you want to import you can just left click on individual photos. If you hold down the control key it will also select multiple photos. Also if you hold down the first photo and then go to the last one and select shift, select, hold down shift and left click it will select them all. Alternatively you can rubber band the photos and videos you wish to add. I'm going to do that and I want to import them all here so I've selected them all and I'm going to select open. Now photo video will accept many different formats normally um, for photo pictures and images you're really looking at JPEG. It will accept other formats but really that's the most common format. For video files again it will, it will accept many different types of video files as you can see here you can select you can see which types it will accept if you can't see your file here sometimes you can select it to all files here and it may have, your video file may come here it may be stored as a weird extension name um, typically for videos .mov or mov or .mp4 is typical um, you'll get from something from your smartphone. Okay we're going to select all our pictures and video and we're going to open them. Okay now it's added them to our storyboard here as you can see. Now perhaps we don't like the order um, they've, they've appeared in so if I just scroll here, this is using the bottom scroll bar here, I can view my storyboard. As you can see, that's this is the order they will be played in. From left to right, that's the, the order my photos will be shown in my slideshow. But perhaps I don't like uh, the order they've done in, maybe I want this picture to come first. What you can do is left click and hold, and if you drag, you can see, you can place picture somewhere else so there you go it's moved it there and again if I left click and hold I can place that now if I go off the window it will actually scroll the screen well I'll scroll the storyboard such that I can place it anywhere I want to 
If you want to move uh, multiple pictures at once, if you hold down the control key, you can select multiple slides in your storyboard. And again, you can hold the left button and you can move them somewhere else. Maybe I want to move these to the end of my storyboard, and so on and so forth. Uh, similarly, if I hold down a first photo and hold down the shift key and I left click, it will select all the slides in between there. So you can rearrange your storyboard like so. At any time, if you wish to preview slideshow, you can use the preview buttons as shown previously, where you've got play, stop, and seek. So, you know, I can just move my seat bar to any time I want in this to see what my slideshow will look like. Or I can just push the play button and just watch it through. Now, Photo Video automatically adds this pan and zoom effect. I'll just show you how to turn that off again in case you missed it. You go to the slideshow settings icon here and you untick this option here. When I preview my slideshow now, it just shows the photos one after another without any pan and or zoom effect. There we go. I'm going to turn that back on for now, but that was just to show you how to turn it off if you don't want that option. Now, if you wish to set how long each picture or slide is shown for, at the bottom of each slide here, you can see there's a number. That represents the number of seconds that slide is shown for. So the first slide is shown for 8 seconds. So there we go. So if I want to change that, I can left click that and it will give you lots of different times. So maybe I want it a bit longer, maybe I want it as 12 seconds. Or you can even change the number in there. Maybe I only wanted it for a brief period like uh, 4.5 seconds. I could do that and it was changed. Also if you don't the default time in Photo Food Show is 8 seconds. If you want to change that, again that's in the slideshow settings time. You can change what the default time is for each slide. Uh, say I would wish it to be 7 seconds, I can change it there. Now when I add photos from now on they will be have 7 seconds. If I wanted to change all the times now I could just click apply times to all slides. There we go, now they've all changed to 7 seconds. Um, if you do note that any videos won't be affected by this. By default you can't change the time of the video. It's, it's The time reported there is simply the length of the video. So that video is 27.9 seconds. Now you can edit it such that you can shorten this video but I'll cover that um, in a later tutorial. For now they just they just the video clips are the lengths that um, they are. Now if you wish to remove any slides simply left click them any slide that's highlighted once again you can hold down the control key and left click and select multiple ones and either select the cross here to delete them or you can right click and you can select remove slides there. I won't do that for now because I, I want to keep them but that's how you would remove slides. Now you can also from this little tick that's by the add slides button, it's a little tick, if I left click that you have some other options here. Uh, one option is to open a file explorer window and as you can see it's gone back to my pictures and photos. I can then drag and drop my pictures in if I wish to do that. That's just a useful tip if you prefer to do that kind of thing. I'm just going to remove that because it's a duplicate. Also by default uh, when you select that photo video will go back to the last folder that you had you selected your pictures from. As you can see um, it's gone straight back to where my pictures were before. Um, when you start up photo video by fresh by default it goes to your pictures folder. If you ever wish to change the default location of where your pictures are stored, you can go up to the tools option here 
and select set default folder locations and here is all the default locations where photo video will search for photos and video music project files and also your authored route which we will cover later on so that's out of interest if you ever want to just change the default location your pictures are imported from now the next thing to quickly show you is how to rotate a slide um, we've imported here they all they're all the correct orientation but sometimes they may be wrong maybe they've the portrait pictures come out landscape or something like that if you left click on a slide you'll be presented with some more options here as you can see you can now rotate the picture left or right um, another option to do rotation is to if you right click on your slide and select edit media edit slide media you can also do more things to your photo hose here uh, one of them is to do rotations or mirror effects there also um, if you want to rotate your picture by just um, an arbitrary amount like 10 degrees if you left click on your slide select text and images and then left click your picture there such as it's highlighted you've actually got the option to rotate it like that way okay, and there's also rotate icons there as well but I'm going to leave that back as default so it's just showing there's lots of ways of doing the same thing but from different windows so I'm happy with that the next thing to show you is sometimes you may want to duplicate or clone your slide um, it's not obvious why now why you may want to do that but um, perhaps you want to split your video into two and something like that or and you just need two copies of your same video or picture then if you right click on a slide there's a duplicate slides option as you can see it's now had that slide in there twice that's a useful tip to know um, it will become more obvious later on how why that is the case but for now I'm going to remove that duplication by selecting that the next thing I'm going to show you is how to add a blank slide to your storyboard now sometimes you may want to add a, just a, a blank slide and, and then perhaps add some text to it just to introduce your slideshow or for whatever reason you just perhaps want it blank for a while um, what you can do is left click the little tick here and select add blank slide now that will add it to the end of the storyboard which you can then move to the position you want but a, a quicker way of doing it is to right click on a particular slide and say insert blank slide after the slide or before the slide ok so we want to make it appear at the start of the storyboard so we're going to say insert before the slide now when you add a, a blank slide it doesn't necessarily have to have just a blank background we, we can quickly set the default background picture or even video or just set it to a particular colour I'm just going to leave it to the black blank background so I'm going to add that blank slide to the start of my storyboard there we go there now, now I've added my blank slide if I left click on it and select the text and images tab I can then add some text to it maybe or you can do this by just double left clicking somewhere in your preview or selecting the text tab and select add text there so I'm going to double left click and, and just type in something like that there you can see I can move it there so when I start my my slideshow it's just giving me that blank slide with some text I've added you can play around with this um, to do whatever you want it to do the next thing I'm going to show you is how to add a something called a create slide from template now when you just import your photos normally they just appear full screen and with an automatic pan and zoom effect so you have this kind of one after another slide kind of effect which is very nice um, you can leave that at default but sometimes you want to 
have the slide look a bit more fancy, have a more bit more motion or other things going on. So there are many sort of template designs in Photo Video, and if I create a new one from a template, as you can see, we're given all these different templates now. I should bring up some, show you some sort of examples. Maybe we want this sort of montage effect here, where it comes in, and we've got these black bars. Um, as you can see, there's definitely many effects of them. We can we can left click here, and then we can create the slide. Now, when you create a, a template design template in this way, it needs some inputs to that design. Uh, in this case, it needs an image one for this template. Um, what you need to do is select one here by left clicking that or double clicking there. I will select one of my holiday photos again. As you can see, it's added this kind of montage effect. So when I select done, it's now added that to the end of my storyboard. I'm going to move that to somewhere I want it, like there, and we're going to remove the old version of it. So when it now plays that slide, there we go, it's kind of got this nice little montage effect. Now um, a quicker way perhaps to do it is if you left click a slide, like this one here, and select the design tab here, you can select the designs here but it will automatically add that design to the slides that you've selected. As you can see, I've just selected that, it will automatically apply it to that that design, that to that slide. Um, also, some of these designs take multiple image inputs, uh, like this one here, which has nine, nine pictures. Um, by default, it will just use the following slides to populate that design. So that's normally what you want. If you select apply design, it will then apply it. I'm not going to do that. Um, well, perhaps I'm just going to do a, a simple one like that. There we go. Just and I'm going to apply the design, and there we go. It's it's now updated our storyboard with that that particular design. Now, a good thing to do now is to save our project. So, to just sort of save our project, not actually create or burn or anything like that but just to save our project file in case we want to uh, save now and continue at a later date you click the save button here you can hit control s or the save project so I'm going to save a project and by default uh, as we saw earlier it will save it in your documents photo video projects folder so I'm going to call this project 4 and we'll save it now it's worth noting here that these project files don't actually contain your photos or video. It will just con it will just contains information about where they're stored in the storyboard and, and their layouts and all that stuff. But it, the project file on your hard drive does not actually contain the photos and video. That it just contains a link to wherever they're stored in your hard drive. So the only thing you need to watch out for is perhaps at a later date you may move your photos and video. Uh, to another folder or you may delete them. At that point the project file will, will complain saying that you can't find the photos and video needed for that project file and it will offer you solutions to resolve that at the time. So that is worth noting. So so it's just to say there if I want to open a project I select that. As you can see I can reopen my project. So I'm going to open the one I've just saved. As you can see there we go. If I wanted to create a new project, I just select new. Now, as you can see by default, it's actually gone to a video file. Now, we discussed output types in the previous tutorial, but um, by default, um, I think PhotoVideo does have default project type of video file. This is different to DVD output. Now, if you want to change that, you can set the default project type. As you can see, I've got it to video file. You want the default project type to be DVD video, you select it there. So when I select new, it's now gone to DVD video. This is the default project type. Okay, I'm going to load my project back in again.
okay I think that uh, covers everything I'm going to show you in this tutorial uh, what we've shown here is how to import photos and video into PhotoPid Show such that they appear as slides along here in your storyboard uh, and then we talked about how you can manipulate your slides you know you can change the order that things appear in or how long they, the length they are displayed for and things like this um, we've talked about adding blank slides and or these design um, we've also talked about the project file the photo feature project file the, uh, they are .pds2 files okay I hope to see you soon I hope you've learned a lot today and I'll see you for the next tutorial